Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video and today we are taking a look at if else statements in Grasshopper or how exactly are those made and performed. So for example, if I have this little point here, we can just take it and go in, out, in, out. Woo! You see, that's like amazing, isn't it? Anyway, we want to create the same thing with... Uh, the environment. So normally you have the if else statements in some kind of programming language, but we want to make it ourselves with the stream gates in Grasshopper. So let's go. Perfect. So I will just start with a new file to explain it just one by one. So Anyway, we will create three rectangles that we already have here and we just put them into the geometry for now. So we just put this one in here. Perfect. Um, when you go under the set tree and then you have two things that are very important to understand. One would be the stream filter and the other one would be the stream gates. So they each take, they work kind of similar but then in a way they work different. So for example, we have this gate here, right? And it says zero. And we can also create more gates as well. So, for example, when I have a number slider now that goes from 0 till 3, I put this in here and I have certain values. For example, uh, in this one we have, I don't know, bacon something, you know. And I just copy this really quickly. This other one would be cheese. This one would be bread. And the last one would be the, it wouldn't, it's a classic one in programming language, the spam. So we will just put those in here. And then I will put another panel here. And you see if I will now move the number of side that we had set up at the gate, it will go through the things and it will put us, take the, the output uh, which will be created here, for example which is really useful. Um, another thing, if you have the button toggle, uh, button toggle here, uh, you can also put this in the gate as well. And it, if it's false, it acts as a zero. And if it's true, it, as, it, it acts as a one. So for example, if it just, you know, it goes just between one and two. But um, the number, uh, the integer would basically do the same thing in this case. So. Next thing we also have the stream gate, which works a little bit different, but uh, works similar nonetheless. So we have, for example, the amount of data that we want to put in. So we just like merge, um, for example, those two, the cheese and the spam. And we also will merge the bacon and the bread together. So this one would be the bacon bread. The other one would be, be the uh, spam and cheese. And we actually, yeah, or we just need to, we can actually just merge them all together as well. It's kind of stupid, uh, like this. And for example, now we might have like a few targets that we go through. We just do it for, with two for now. And um, I might want to re have this reach at this one place or not the other one. And for example, if I now switch it, with again um, a toggle and I will put this in the gate here as well it will go back and forth there so it's false it goes to first it's true it goes to the other one so but now how can we make it so those things are actually like usable so for example if you're going to create a point and we just create this point in here and we want to uh, know if this point is actually in this correct area so we're going to use the region uh what is it, point in region i think it is yeah point in curve and we take this curve and we obviously have to uh right click put the geometry in and now it will give us a um relationship of this thing and if it's gonna be either two or zero because in the relationship it takes zero is outside one is coincidence so it's like on the edge and uh, two is inside but we can just simply actually make just a boolean here and it will translate the two directly into a true and the um, zero into a false very easily you see and now the cool thing is if i took this relation or the boolean now in the gate here you see 
it will go back and forth in this case. Da, 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 da. So that's pretty, pretty fucking awesome. Anyhow, um, now I, for example, I might have a, like a different thing. For example, I have the, I have the stream. Okay, I have maybe like a like a number of of extrusion that I want to use. For example, it's like twenty, and I put this in the stream. And I want to basically extrude a certain like geometry. So we have this geometry here already, that's this one. And I also want to input the other geometry that we have here as well. So we just put multiple geometries like this. And now I want to extrude it. So and now either it will basically use the base that we have like here and the direction will be this one or we will use the base of the other one and the direction will be the other one and now you see for example if i will move this point in here it changes to the other one it goes like back and forth so it's already pretty cool that we have um this opportunity for example that ah, it goes here or there so maybe now we also can make it a little bit more complex for example um let's here we have the stream gate. I will just create another one as well. Uh, stream filter, I mean. And uh, the one will be a number slider of just 20, and the other one will be number slider of 100. Okay. And now we want to have it so, for example, uh, we might take in another point like this, create it here, create this point like there and if the amount the distance for example from this point to that point so we just create the distance will be lower and then we make like a lower than or wait smaller than and we want to have some kind of other number that we want to put in there as well that is kind of important to us so we take this as a second number this is the first number and we now see if this is true or false so when we move this point closer it should change or wait let me actually see what the distance should be okay we're very tall in those numbers here so we might need to true okay it's true like over here okay so now we have this number for example being true and um we want to take, for example, none, e like even though we still have uh, this space here, we want to create a, a ra random set of uh, points in the middle. So of those two things here. So if this point is very close to it, it's fine. But if not, then it doesn't do it basically. So we just populate it with uh, 2D here. Take the region of our rectangle here and then take the count number there. Of the gate which is then again connected oh this is so absolutely like a spaghetti code please be more responsible and make this look better so I'm just put a little bit here so it doesn't get too confusing like this I think that's fine and now the good thing is if we have a certain distance to this point it basically uh, will take the other point for example you see here it's going to be less and more, less and more. And now it's going to be quite interesting because if I move this point, for example, inside, so you see here, it's, I just want to make it a little, oh yeah, wait, I'm going like this. And when I have this point that we have here at the beginning and I move it inside, first those switch off and when it moves inside even further, then it changes those things here. So that's like pretty cool because it, you can just go back and forth with it uh, really easy. And obviously then we can take the, the the plane here as well. And maybe we can now make a decision depending on the things. So we can do it so if there are less of those things, we can just like add it maybe as well to the, the same things here. We can just take the stream gate of that I think it would be quite excessive though. Or we just like take just a normal number. And we extrude upwards, box rectangle. 
and we want to extrude it just as we had here. And now the cool thing is again, if I have this point, it goes further away. It creates those things, but then still when we create it like this, it will always have those if else statements, if else statements. And it can basically go like down like a whole rabbit hole like of if else's, if else's, if else's. And so that's like pretty useful how to use it. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. This is basically just like how can you make if else statements in Grasshopper and I think it's very important to kind of understand how it works. So I hope this came across a little bit. And yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you next one. Like, subscribe, this kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, thank you very much and bye-bye.